For Sunday, August 9th, you found the Georgia gang. Topping our agenda this morning, besides politics, is DeKalb County, where Mike Bowers says it's rotten to the core. The county commission in DeKalb hands a huge gift to Arthur Blank and his soccer team. And Atlanta this weekend is the GOP capital of the United States. Mm -hmm. Send the stories up for grabs on the Georgia Gang. From the Fox 5 studios, the Georgia Gang starts now. And we're glad you could be with us on this uh, Sunday in August where the topic really is all about politics the whole weekend because Georgia's got about 10 presidential candidates on the Republican side visiting the red state gathering and we'll get to all that in just a minute but we'll start locally at the uh, DeKalb County Courthouse in Decatur where the former Attorney General of Georgia Mike Bowers handed a letter to the Commission in which he said the county was rotten to the core uh, something that I've suspected for some time, I might say. Mm -hmm. And back in the days when people complained that we talked about DeKalb County too much, I always thought we were headed in this direction. Uh, and I think the reply by Lee May, the interim CEO of DeKalb County, that Bowers' letter was full of salacious but vague innuendo. And it salacious. Was, apparently. I mean, salacious, that's, salacious is about sex stuff, isn't it? No, it doesn't have to be about sex. You know that. L look, I mean, <laughs> yeah, sometimes, and Phil will back well, me up here, but let me just say, folks will come to you and they'll want to pay for some good press. I have never heard of paying $455,000 for the worst headlines of the year. <laughs> but, but here's the it's problem, It's unbelievable. But, but here's very bad, very bad. But, 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 well said, but here's the problem. They didn't pay him. Remember, <laughs> let's remember how this well, went down. Minute. He is a lawyer. They will stroke the check. Well, let's remember, though, that, that uh, the commission two weeks ago in its final budget, took out the money for Mike Bowers. They also took out some money for the uh, district attorney who wanted to work on some public corruption cases. So, But they have been paid from other funds, that, that the general funds of the county. Well, I'm not sure about that. But anyway, look at what happened at the commission meeting on Tuesday. The commission was ready to cut the deal with Arthur Blank. It always begins with public comment. And there were a lot of people there who wanted to talk about the soccer deal with uh, Arthur Blank and Atlanta United Football Club. Right. And the commission's first action that day was to cut off public comment. I, that's unheard of to me. I don't. It's uh, not unheard of. You saw what happened in in, in, Cobb, in County. Cobb County. <laughs> but it's well, not right. right. It's not right. <laughs> well, it's yes, right. yes. No, I would. No, 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 no agree Jeff, with you're that. wrong. <laughs> no, Jeff, you're wrong. In, in Cobb County, they allowed public comment, but they stacked the deck. Right. Okay. In this case, they didn't even allow they didn't public even comment. Allow public comment. I mean, we're so, talking about twelve million dollars of the public's money, and for people not to be able to go in there and say what they think about it, to me, is unconscionable. Well, let's go back to Mike Bowers, and then we'll do the <clears> soccer. Uh, so Mike Bowers there wanting to give public comment. He wanted to read his letter to the commissioners. And they told him he couldn't, and he was escorted out. Hmm. And uh, so later in the day, he released the letter that he had sent to Lee May and the commission, in which he called the county rotten to the core. May's response was that the letter was full of salacious but vague innuendo. Now, May, May is right to a point. It was vague. Yeah. No names were named. Right. But no departments. he dribbled out in the manner of a good journalist a few juicy tidbits <laughs> exactly. about, about P card purchases and and all that kind of thing. But they are, and stuff we know, we just want to see some names attached well, to Well, that's right. And, and, you know, this was not a secret to Lee May and the other members of the commission. The, the deal was that they would do a general, Mike Bowers would do a general overview. He's not the chief investigator. Richard Hyde is. And then Richard Hyde would be continuing to follow up. So this was not a surprise that he was going to do this so-called update on corruption. Now, I think that uh, Lee May should have, and we can, we can, there's legitimate, honest disagreements. How far do you go? You do have to cap an investigation at some point. But I think it should continue a little bit more because they are uncovering not, things. Not on my dime. Okay. Right. No. I mean, you're well, in Fulton County. Minute. Not wait on my minute. dime. It no, should continue. continue. I think you would agree. Four hundred and fifty-five thousand. Well, it's my dime, and I want to spend. We're talking about a hundred thousand dollars a month. I think you would over a hundred and ten thousand dollars a feds, month. The feds need to step it up. State Attorney General. Uh, step it up during the Sam middle of an Olins. investigation. They don't have any responsibility 
ability to tell us what they're Jeff, up to or what things, they're doing? The one thing that this has done is it's uncovered some new things. And that's I know right. you're opposed to corruption. It uncovered some old things. And I think yeah, that that's no, why no, no, Lee no, no, May no. said, yes, no. it did. Because back in June, Bowers went to Lee May, complained about that, or, or told him, reported to him about uh, the PCAR purchases, and he suspended the PCAR purchases. He eliminated PCAR purchases. And right. then it's in this thing as if it's new and it's still ongoing. And it's not. Uh, and then the whole thing with the the the, 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 the Bahamas trip, I think that that's why he said, uh, Lee May said, salacious but vague. But that doesn't get Lee May off the hook, okay? Because you never ask a question you don't know the answer to. <laughs> well, and he did when he invited him in in the first place. But let me, let, me, uh, let me clarify what you just said, Jeff. There is new stuff. Bowers said that there is a major bribery scandal unfolding in one DeKalb department. The thing that bothered me in what Bowers reported was that county departments weren't cooperating with him. They weren't providing the information he needed to thoroughly investigate. Uh, in other words, there's a giant stonewall going on. So then, then to wrap this up, the question then became, the next day's exchange of letters, was when does he get the work done? He wants to deliver, Bowers wants to deliver his report October 6th. Lee May wants it August 28th 26th. or something, mm -hmm. 26th. Uh, what do you think? Well, I think that clearly there is a miscommunication or a misunderstanding, and I think Lee May is trying to stop the spending to cut off the uh, activity by the end of this month. And he says that he, he told Bowers that he wanted to make the report available to the commission in October. And apparently Bowers thinks he has until October to complete the report. I, I'm going to just tell you, this is some very expensive bad press. Yes. It's the worst, <laughs> it, you know. Well, I mean, if it was, if it was. You thought it was a bad idea from Jump Street. If it didn't cost a dime, I did think it was a bad idea from Jump Street. We've got lots of prosecutors. They are doing their jobs as far as we I know. don't think we do. I don't think Robert you don't James think we got is enough doing federal? the thing. Robert James brought a, essentially a week and almost bogus indictment of Burl Ellis. Corruption is rampant all I over that county and Robert James I cannot disagree with you, but we had the feds go after Elaine Bowers. As far as we know, the feds are well, ongoing. Don't marry her to the wrong guy, Elaine Boyer. Elaine Boyer. I'm right. sorry. Uh, did I say uh, Elaine Bowers? Uh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Oh, that's a mistake. That, that's apologies a to mistake. all. It's a funny one. But, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, the feds were doing their job, and I didn't see any reason why we right, let's talk about the soccer deal. This. I don't like the soccer deal, okay? I like DeKalb getting a nice soccer facility. I think we got a pig and a poke. Hmm. We got a building. We got a stadium that seats 3,500, and we got three soccer fields. That's great for the Atlanta United Football Club if you like practicing in the shadow of the jail and the helicopter sitting up on the roof. Uh, and you're also maybe on a landfill, as I understand it. Mm. Uh, but where's the soccer complex? Where's the big soccer complex that brings regional and national tournaments to Metro Atlanta? It's not there. It's not there. It's not there, no. and that would have been a better deal if we'd had a bigger uh, venue. It's in Arthur Blank's other stadium. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, downtown Atlanta. I understand the Braves deal and Cobb County's willing, willingness to invest. Mm -hmm. I understand the Falcon Stadium downtown, big tourist complex, and the city's willingness to invest. Sure. I don't get this one because I, I just don't it think... Was a, it was a close vote. Well, I know, 4-3. Well, not only that, that, but I mean, it was... It, 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 we didn't really get an opportunity to much talk about it. Right. <laughs> you know, it was proposed. You wasn't we, debated, I agree with you. It was greased. Yes. It was greased, yeah. obviously. It was obviously greased, and they knew what they were going to do when they went in, and they knew the four votes were there. Uh, yeah, you need something around there, but I'm not sure that we do this need. Is it. Well, we do need something there, but I don't know if it's on that side of the street. You might be better off on, uh, you know, the other side of, of Memorial Drive. Uh, that thought occurred to me too. That, 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 that's never mind. Uh, start to say Indian country across the street. At least I like the protection of the public safety complex there. You know, when we come back, Kasim Reed's got some issues with firefighters in his city of Atlanta. We'll tell you about it. Have a question or comment for the Georgia gang? Visit their website at myfoxatlanta.com. It's not as much fun as DeKalb County, but there is a little bit of a stir in the city of Atlanta where Mayor Kasim Reed uh, is in a public spat with public safety employees. The Firefighters Union has put up a, a billboard, and I think there are more to come, that says Mayor Kasim Reed does not care about public safety. Which is absurd. And, and, and the mayor, <laughs> true to his style, is speaking out loudly against it. And he's complaining that, it, and, and saying again, that he's not going to talk about pay raises for 
uh, groups that are suing the city over uh, the I, pension. I, I, and that is so wrong. I, I know you have a strong opinion on it, but you know, these people do deserve a raise. Uh, we're having they're attrition. Raise. They have. I, I understand, but they shouldn't be held hostage because they're suing. They have a right no, to sue. No, I don't think that they're being held hostage because they're suing. And any notion that this mayor doesn't support public safety is absurd on its face. We've got 2,000 police officers for the first time in his are you ev worried? ever. 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 We're, not right? filling, we're not filling the slots, Jeff. This is a, a, a fear we we got, a, we got a mayor who has been talking about recidivism at the local level for, unlike any mayor I've ever seen, I think that we have a mayor who's you very concerned about crime public up, safety. Crime we got, up, the murder we got, rates we've got, uh, we've got, uh, we got, uh, we got drug stings over there in English Avenue getting the heroin out of there. I think he's very concerned about public safety. Uh, well, it's, it's obvious, though, that the, these unions are not going to take this lying down. I think it's, it's very interesting. Now, let's turn to the state a little bit. Uh, the calendar of holidays and official days for state government workers was released uh, the other day and uh, the names Confederate Memorial Day and Robert E. Lee's birthday holiday. were whited out so to speak yeah. uh, and they were replaced <laughs> by the term state holiday. Uh, I don't see anything particularly wrong with that. Well it's kind of silly when you have a blank holiday I mean what's all that what do you what's the holiday for? Uh, why not just say you have a holiday if you're honoring the fallen well, dead? Well, I would say, why have those holidays at all? Well, How then, many holidays do you take? Well, then then say that, but it's just to white something out is kind of silly, in my opinion. That's uh, an well. interesting turn of phrase. Uh -huh. That's why I used but it. <laughs> <laughs> because in this case, it wasn't blacked right. out. It, it, was well, the, it was the white right. powers that be that took right. it out. But, but I think it was good that they did. I mean, it's the sensitivity to the recent terrible things that happen in the name of the Confederate uh, rebellion against the United States, that the murders of the nine people in the Charleston church. There's not going to be much said about it. I, I think it's more of a humorous thing than anything else because the state workers still get the day off with pay. Right. right. Swell. Uh, just we should note the dredging began this week at the Port of Savannah. We've talked about that so much. It's such an important topic. It is underway. Now the next step is to see if the federal budget includes the, I believe it's $100 million to, to keep it going. We've talked about Fayette County and their commission vacancy because of the death of Poda Coaston. Uh, the federal judge ruled that that election to fill her seat will be by district, not, not, at large. not at large. But the larger issue of the legality of at-large elections remains before the court. And uh, then we have President Obama, uh, and this is not stuff we talk about a lot, but he's proposed, the EPA has proposed uh, emission standards that will require Georgia to cut emissions by another 15 percent by 20... Yes, I think it's 2025, I believe. But here, here's, the, here's the point. Everyone that's uh, worried about rising electricity rates and, uh, and reliability ought to worry about this because it's too much and uh, the Georgia Chamber of Commerce uh, had a statement just the other day uh, pointing that out. And uh, I know everything Obama does, you always love. But let's be let's no. be objective. There's a lot of it has Democrats. nothing to do with them. Obama. It has to do with whether or not we well, protect it, the our environment. It has to do. It has to do with look like China. Let me because finish if my it point. To you, we let, me, would. let me finish. That's <laughs> absurd. Let me finish my point, though. It's it's another executive overreach by an out of control federal agency. The there you go. EPA. If Congress is going to to do this, let Congress do it. If they're not, they shouldn't. So it's another Obama overreach. Let me jump wow. on two local political things before we go to the national political scene and we'll do this rather quickly. The pastor of Ebenezer Baptist Church, the Reverend Raphael Warnock, uh, is thinking about challenging Johnny Isaacson for the U.S. Senate in 2016. Good luck to him. Yeah. Well, yeah, I but would say. the Democrats, the Democrats <laughs> haven't been able well, to find anyone. But so. I, I well, would I don't say. think that it's a matter of finding anyone or not. I, I mean, here's a young person with a, a state, 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 you know, statewide name recognition, a lot of interest. He has the intelligence. He's got the talent. And I think that he can make a credible run. More importantly, can he win? Maybe not this cycle, but possibly the next. He is a young guy. But more importantly, he gets to bring up some issues that we need before the American. I mean, the, yeah, the, he, the, he's going to bring up the, a the bunch of issues, Jeff. That have been universally rejected by Georgians. Right. Like expanding Medicaid for low income That's right. folks who can't afford it and bringing $30 billion That's that we right. sent to Washington back to our state. All rejected. And Those are very good issues, I think, for Reverend Warnock to bring to a U.S. Senate campaign. If that's exactly. all they can come and up with, the Democrats are really hurting to get oh, a I, candidate. I totally disagree. And I also think he can turn out the vote 
that would be uh, the thing that. So would you be, want the black vote turned out? He's just being used as a vehicle. He, no, for this? he's not. He's representing the interests of the black community as well as the interests of progressive thinking people in the community. How's that going to reach and out that, to? Him? And the, while some of the against uh, the most popular politician in the state of Georgia, Johnny Isaacson. Well, so what do you really? do? Give him a pass just because he's popular? I Mike would. Thurman ran against him, and they're friends. All right, real quickly, special <laughs> election. Real, yeah, that's right. He did. They did. Uh, real, and, and look what he got. Uh, what did he get? He got a state race. Forty-two percent, right? Wasn't that it? How in many? Thurman's case, forty-two percent. Well, forty-two percent is not yeah. bad in a right. statewide race. Right, and that was six years ago, and the demographics of the state votes. have changed. All right, in, in Brookhaven, mostly Sun Sandy Springs and Chambly, special election for the state house this Tuesday. It's become a full partisan affair. It's a non nonpartisan special election, but Max Davis is campaigning as a Republican. And he's had the backing this past week of uh, Governor Deal, came to Brookhaven for him. Taylor Bennett is running as a garden variety Democrat, all those losing issues in the rest of the state. <laughs> and Kasim Reed attended a fundraiser for uh, Taylor Bennett. So it's just Republican, Democrat. Well, the key here, and I'm a Fulton County, and the key is control of the Fulton County right. legislative right. delegation. This is the vote that will do it. And as someone who does not want my taxes and my assessments to keep going up, and we're trying to reform it against our dysfunctional government, we don't need this liberal uh, Taylor and, Bennett and to be elected. that's a mischaracterization of what's been going on in Fulton County. Oh, listen, County. if you've followed Fulton County, even Democrats realize it's they been had, dysfunctional. They only and raised had taxes tax. once in the last 20 Go years. Go back and Come Google on. Fulton County county and tax increases and dysfunctional government. That's why we had Sandy Springs. Did you ever hear about that? We got away a, from it. Didn't you just have a, a tax cut? 11%. Yes. yes. But yes, there was thanks. a 17% increase the year before. Yes. Which is what the delegation we're, we're, we're trying to wipe out that increase. That's right. All right. We <laughs> got to get out. When we come back, uh, the first Republican debate and the Red State gathering here in Atlanta, uh, they're everywhere. Stay with us. Have a question or comment for the Georgia gang? Visit their website at myfoxatlanta.com. This side of the table had a big night Thursday night. I'm not so sure the other side did, but yeah, we were able great. to watch the Republican debate from Cleveland. And uh, <laughs> to set the stage for you, before we get into that debate, let's talk about some polling recently for Fox 5 that showed, astonishingly to me, Phil, that Donald Trump leads Georgia with about 30% of the very fractured Republican vote. Well, that's right. Our Fox 5 political analyst, Matt Towery, uh, the pollster, and his son, uh, Matt Jr., did the poll. Uh, it was done on August 3rd. You're right. Trump uh, is tapping into something. I know we'll talk about that. 30% in the state. These are registered uh, likely Republican voters. I think that ought to be said yes. first. And uh, Jeb Bush came in with 17 percent. Ben Carson, uh, 10 percent. Uh, Mike Huckabee, who won the primary in 2008 here, 7 percent. Cruz, 6. Walker, 5. And then on down. So uh, it's going to be, of course, a very fluid situation. But uh, do you think it changed after Thursday night? You know, I think I somewhat because when we all saw Donald Trump raise his hand and say he wouldn't necessarily support the Republican nominee, that is not going over well. I think Trump is still going to be strong. Oh, I think just the but opposite. I think he'll I think start that, fading. I think that he had such a magnificent performance that <laughs> instead of 30 percent, he's probably up to 40 or 50. <laughs> well, as someone else said, every pundit who has tried to predict and analyze Trump has been wrong about the impact and the effect of what he says. And does. So well, he was right about one thing, though, and that is that illegal immigration would never have been an issue if he hadn't brought it to the fore, so he did a great service to oh, the country. Oh, he was responsible for that. He was. He did. Donald Trump. Well, the others hadn't been talking about it, and Donald Trump talked about it in no uncertain terms. <clears throat> yeah, and, but it would uh, have been asked by and the debate, so I don't think he gets credit for that. Well, I, in my takeaway from Thursday night, uh, first of all, I'm surprised that Trump's I'm, I'm, at first blush, I'm surprised at Trump's success in the polls, but there is tremendous anger after these awful seven years of the worst president in the last hundred years. Oh my okay. God, yes. the best president in the last hundred years. And, and, and so it's the understandable, has given us some health care and other things that we've, and yeah, a dozen other presidents have tried recession. and failed to do. And good luck paying for it. A president <laughs> who just made a deal on Iran yeah. that is worse than Neville Chamberlain at Munich. I, oh, I, you know, I know that you all but are anyway, really cozy let's go enough back to those Republicans. Well, no, I'm, I'm just going to say this. You've got a lot of your Democrat friends like Chuck Schumer, who you usually 
actually love. They have said this is a terrible deal with Iran, and that's, I tell you, that's going to mark him down as one of our worst presidents. I yeah, it is. So. And, uh, I don't uh, think so. so I think Trump, Thursday night, I think he'll start to slip back near the pack. That's my my prediction well, and I think if you if you go be. to sort of fill overall winners and losers on the Republican side oh my goodness I think Rand Paul doesn't have much reason for being there in that top 10 anymore I agree with you here's here's what my takeaway I'm interested in what everybody says I thought that uh, Cruz uh, was a winner I thought Huckabee oh, oh my god <laughs> yeah Please. no I know, wow, I, know you don't, I know you don't I know you don't you guys don't, don't even know, say anything because you don't know anything no. really? we don't know anything well, yeah. can I at least we can't finish? judge can a I, candidate after, after doing this for can decades I, can I at least finish a sentence we can't can I, can say I, who we think is a decent candidate you think Mark, Bernie Sanders is a Rubio decent candidate Rubio did a great you job in that you're not going to yeah, like Rubio any of these people. Job, I'm going right? to just finish finish my sentence if I could. You finished it. Gee, thank you. You're welcome. I, I thought that Huckabee, Cruz, and Christie did very well, and I thought Paul <laughs> didn't do well. Bush was a little. Uh, Bush was sort of down in the middle. He was tentative, yeah. he was tentative yeah. and he was one. nervous. Yes. But I don't think that that's going to be the way he shows up in every debate. And I Alexis, think that he's going to do better as these things progress. I'm with you, Alexis. I thought Governor John Kasich of Ohio was outstanding. I <laughs> thought so, too. I thought Not just because he, he was playing on the home court, but he but was outstanding. I thought outstanding. he was the star of the debate. I thought he won it, clearly. I mean, he was the most impressive, the most um, thoughtful, and the most political. I mean, he was so smooth with but, Trump. I mean, let's face it, Trump <laughs> we stole about his record. <laughs> Trump stole the show, and yes, and, and, and oh, yeah, I disagree. And, and, he, and he, oh, I think that he, I think he stole the show in that debate, and everybody was trying to, everybody's beating up on Trump because they know that right now he's in, he's in the, he's in the lead. No, I, I think that's a good analysis, <coughs> and I, I, I think that uh, Marco Rubio had a great line though that we've got uh, plenty of great candidates to choose from, and uh, the other party doesn't. Well, that's, well, that's also, true. Well, that's to be seen and, and uh, determined there, too. There are some but thoughtful, the, the, there are some yeah, thoughtful but Republicans in there. Thing, I don't think that Trump and Cruz are among them, but I do think that there are some thoughtful. Right. Well, and let's say this: thoughts. the Democrats have set a debate <laughs> schedule, and really, do you want to watch Hillary Clinton? Do you want to watch Bernie Sanders? Do you want to watch Martin O'Malley? Hillary Clinton this week, it was learned, is the subject of a criminal probe by the FBI wow. over her emails. I that's think, serious well, stuff. I, mean, you know, I think if, right. get out, if her poll numbers continue to crater, the Democrats, you guys are going to have to really think about well, this. We've got, we got, we got the moral ma minority Republican Party, you know, in in, in favor of, uh, what is it, a casino operator? we got to get I out. It's great. <laughs> All right, when we come back, <laughs> the more winners and losers is if we hadn't had enough. <laughs> Time now for the week's winners and losers. Remember us on Facebook as well, and remember to check the Fox 5 Facebook page. Uh, and we'll begin the winners and losers with you, Jeffrey. Well, thank you, Dick. Uh, I, the loser has got to be, you know, DeKalb County. I mean, these were the worst headlines imaginable. Yeah. And to pay a half a million dollars... Uh, and I guess the clock is still running for them is is pretty amazing. And so, you know, it, it, just terrible, terrible. We didn't think it could get any worse than it did. Yeah. Uh, and, but the winner I want to make, the Atlanta Housing Authority, they're a finalist for the Choice Neighborhood Award. It is a $30 million <laughs> grant from Department of Housing and Urban Development and a real opportunity to develop the west side around the stadium. And uh, there are a lot of things going on there at Westside Future Fund and um, uh, other initiatives, but that $30 million would, could be quite a catalyst. All right, Phil? Well, I think the winner has to be this red state gathering that we've been talking yeah. about here in Atlanta, and you called it it's the capital of the GOP. It's, it's quite a boon for, uh, for Georgia, and Eric Erickson, the organizer, uh, has to be a winner for, for doing this. And uh, I think that uh, you know, our friend uh, who often subs for uh, Jeff uh, Theron, uh, Johnson has is, is, is just moved to a new consulting job over at Greenberg Trowing. So we, uh, we make him a winner and uh, wish him well. Uh, you know, I've got a winner, too, and that is the, um, uh, the U.S. History APS course has been changed. It's now going to emphasize free enterprise How about and, that? and traditional history. The founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, who you guys don't like anymore. So that's, that's a <laughs> winner. Go ahead, okay. Alexis. And, and they're not going to emphasize the war of northern aggression, right? Okay, which is also known as the Civil War, right? And the Confederate rebellion against the United States of America, <laughs> which it would be my loser. But um, I just want to, to, of the debates that we saw, I just want to again lift up John Kasich because that is his name <laughs> is that how you say yeah. Kasich of the gov former governor of Ohio I think he was outstanding and clearly was the most uh, intelligent and thoughtful 
participant. And the losers would be Cruz, uh, Rubio, and Carly Fiorina. I thought she was outstanding. I thought she was horrible. And she was so hateful. Was All right. Yeah, I didn't like Rubio. All right, for my part. He had uh, to pay off those $100,000 in student loans in four years. Okay, uh, for my <laughs> part, uh, we lost a good one in the world of journalism this past week. Frank Hyland, the legendary oh, yes. sports writer for the Atlanta Journal, known for especially for his coverage of the Atlanta Falcons and Norm Van Brocklin, died. And uh, his wake will be today. He was little known, though, for something very special. He was fluent in Russian and international affairs. And Jeff, you'll recall when he was the excellent national news editor for the journal, too. Absolutely. And he was very one of good. TV stars at the video edition of the Journal Constitution. <laughs> he came like he was a brilliant. All right, we got to get out. Day. We'll see you next week on the Georgia Gang. The opinions expressed in this broadcast are those of the panelists appearing in this program. 